Learning can be a fantastic thing. Although for many of us, our experience of education at school was boring, often irrelevant and something that had to be endured. Hunger for learning and a zest for life is the fifth of our 16 key factors. Don't be put off thinking this is a dull subject because that's not true. It's part of how you achieve freedom. If this skill or quality isn't developed, you won't get very far trying to change your life. Each of our key factors is an essential tool that will provide you with the means to unlock your potential. Our brains have sufficiently evolved in complexity to provide us with the means to deliberately learn and go beyond ourselves. Education is how we can now evolve further. But if we're not prepared to make best use of the brain's capacity, we'll merely tread water or even slip backwards. It's up to us. The future's in our own hands and hemispheres. It's our choice. When we say there needs to be a hunger for learning, the emphasis is well and truly on the word hunger. The desire or appetite for learning must be strong. It's a longing to know. Many have said that ignorance is bliss, and there might be a tiny bit of truth to this saying. But when you're exposed to a particular aspect of reality, you have a choice. You can turn away, avoiding the situation, or somehow minimise it in your head. Alternatively, you can face what's what and work out what to do to make the situation better. This latter option is the healthy and mature approach. We've linked the hunger for learning and a zest for life together because they should be inseparable. Zest is an appropriately descriptive word, conjuring up great enthusiasm and energy. It's a calm intensity. If you're getting worried by phrases like longing to know and great enthusiasm and energy, thinking this isn't me, please don't worry. Rome isn't built in a day. What I'm talking about is a step-by-step -step process that you can master level by level. But ultimately, you have to aim high. This hunger for learning key factor acts like the on-off switch and volume control for what is often thought of as motivation. It's the how much do you want it and what do you want most. It's curiosity, the portal to learning and thereby to making your dream come true. We use the following story in our work to really emphasise the importance of hunger for learning. A pupil came to the teacher, seeking to learn. The teacher took him to a nearby river, pushed his head under the water and held it there for a short time. When your head was underwater, what did you want most? asked the teacher. Air, replied the pupil. Come back when you want to learn more than you wanted air, said the teacher. There's a danger that you'll underestimate the efficacy of the 16 key factors, individually and collectively. In fact, you almost certainly will fail to realise the extent or scale of what we're attempting to communicate. These precise tools for life can make a massive difference when correctly and fully applied. So, to repeat, aim high. Excellence is not commonly encouraged in society. It's mediocrity that unfortunately dominates as a norm. So there's an accepted dullness. Social conditioning has dumbed you down. Psychological avoidance has shafted you, switched you off in some ways, reduced your zest for life. These limitations block your potential to know a fullness of relationship with reality. So they need to be undone and therefore learning is necessary. Radical change is undesirable to the establishment. And by the establishment, I'm not just referring to the centres of power that govern a country like the UK, plus the various institutions which offer support. It goes wider than this into the matrix of both official and social interactions where power is exercised. There's an elite, whether it be politicians, the peers of the realm, senior civil servants, the royalty and aristocracy, lawyers, academics, the clergy and other religious leaders, financiers, industrialists, the media and the commentariat, senior figures in the armed forces, and so on. 
they all actively seek to maintain their grip or control. Anyone or anything that threatens to rock the proverbial boat is frowned upon, sidelined, ignored. When we're talking about a fundamental shift in psychology, have no doubt that this is nothing less than a healthy and non-violent revolution. Yes, it's a simple matter of individual choice, of education, but it's nevertheless severely challenging. And it's not within the norms of accepted behaviour. At least, not yet, but we're working on it. Although religions have effectively called for the same thing for centuries, significant change for the better of all, The message has come from men wearing silly costumes, collars and hats, preaching down at the common people from the lofty heights of a pulpit. Guilt and fear were inappropriately employed to keep the masses under control as the institutions prospered. And, anyway, it all never really got going in terms of actual change. Hypocrisy, for example, has always been conveniently ignored or brushed aside. They keep bleating on nowadays, still part of the establishment, even after decades of being in the spotlight after a mass of sexual scandals have been exposed. So the rat race continues on and on. People obediently fit in as cogs in the wheels, looking forward to spending their money, having fun at the weekend, going on that next exotic holiday. But is that really it? Is that all? Where's the hunger for learning? What's happened to the search for that something more? There needs to be a change of mindset. Life has to be seen as an ongoing opportunity to grow, enhance, improve. Not in a material way by upgrading to a bigger house, a flashier kitchen and a more expensive car, but by rising up through psychological development. This change must be demonstrably real and hugely beneficial for everyone and everything. It has to go way beyond the insipid tokenism that you often see and hear from the environmental movement. A tweak here and there whilst you basically carry on more or less doing the same things as before won't actually change anything. Not when measured against the effects of billions of people indulging in take, take, take. Well-meaning words count for nothing in the real world. It's actions that matter. If the mindset isn't conducive to change, change won't happen. And, to repeat, the path forwards has to be a proven route on an exact map so you can be sure that getting from A to B is achievable. The rat race endures because materialism delivers and keeps on delivering, albeit at a price. In contrast, religion has miserably failed to deliver on its promise of making heaven on earth. Philosophy and the mishmash versions of so-called spirituality have likewise failed to help people to change. It's a sad situation, the mother of all fuck-ups, but this is a no-bullshit reality. And, of course, it is possible to unfold your human potential, and we know exactly how to do it. Learning the basics of how to read and write, mathematics, science, etc. is important. But so is learning about psychology, social conditioning and how your brain works. It's been known for some time that EQ is a more reliable measurement than IQ when it comes to how an individual will get on in life. It's disappointing that formal education is still so lacking failing to teach our youngsters the vital tools for life that we're talking about in this series of films. The education system, whether it be at the primary, secondary or tertiary level, is missing crucial chunks of knowledge that should be being taught to everyone. Curiosity is the precursor to the raw act of learning. Babies and young children demonstrate this, but it usually gets quickly buried or discouraged. Most parents become tired of their child's why this and why that questioning, wanting a quieter life for themselves. Children learn the lessons of avoidance early on. I've touched on this before. The majority of people are rarely in what we call the learning zone. Instead, they stay in the safe zone, aware and wary of getting anywhere near the fear zone, which causes emotional anxiety. The all-important learning zone is between these other two zones. It's best to operate well away from the safe zone, where you'll learn nothing, 
at the top of the learning zone, close to feeling uncomfortable, but not actually in the fear zone. And if you're willing and hungry to learn from your mistakes, then this is even better. You must listen and look at what's going on. Most people have long since stopped listening or looking. The various avoidance techniques have the effect of generating interference, hindering your ability to listen and see. There's distortion or some degree of psychological deafness, blindness. You only hear what you want to hear and see what you want to see. So you have to shake yourself out of the mental slumber, getting sufficiently awake to be able to hear and see. It's a form of grasping opportunity. You have to want to learn, recognising that going beyond your limitations is a good thing. To be able to listen and to see, you need a reasonable degree of concentration. This involves sustained focus. You have to learn to be in control of your own brain, directing your mind as you choose. You don't need to be a whiz kid or genius when it comes to learning. You just need to be serious and consistent. Continual learning leads to improvement after improvement. Keep going and you'll eventually reach your goal. I keep banging on and on about avoidance because you need to see how this short-term strategy at keeping you safe from emotional disappointment and pain is badly flawed. It actually severely hinders or hurts you in the long term. As you reduce the avoidance, you'll begin to recognise benefits happening. Learning will become easier simply because you'll be less defensive. Instead of shutting off, deflecting or minimising, you'll want to know. It's all about facing reality and we're going to explore this key factor in our next film. So I look forward to you joining me again for that one very soon.